ball run score New Zealand and Latham. Oh, that's out of play. Tell me, what was your first club in New Zealand? My first club in New Zealand was BWCUCC, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it's Burnside West Christchurch University Cricket Club. So I'm still a member of that club today and, yeah, certainly very proud to play for Burnside. Are you the most famous one at the club? No, I've had quite a few black caps, which is cool. Graham Dowling, former New Zealand captain, George Worker, played when he was down here, Kruger Van, Van Wyck also played, so had a few black caps, which is great. Was it your first cricketing memory, playing club cricket, or was there a early memory? My earliest memory probably would have been when my brother started actually. He was about a year and a half older than me and he went down and, and played Milo cricket I think it was back then and I actually went along and, and played with him and played in his age group for sort of pretty much leading up to up to intermediate school and the the age above sort of where I was meant to be I think only because you know, it was probably easier for mum and dad to go to one game rather than two. There's a lot of chat about your dad, everyone knows your dad's quite famous. Is You didn't get pressured as a kid into playing cricket, it was just something that you grew up watching and, and playing? Yeah, I think growing up actually rugby was probably my, my number one sport that I enjoyed playing the most. Cricket was something that I also enjoyed doing, but I yeah, certainly back then wanted to be an all black more than, than a black cap and wasn't until about fifth form I think it was where I stopped playing rugby and, and sort of focused a little bit more on cricket. Managed to make an under 19 squad over the winter so the focus sort of shifted from playing both rugby and cricket to just playing cricket so certainly to look back at my rugby days is something that I, I really enjoy and it's great having a bit of banter with the guys because there are a few keen rugby players around the group as well. Who was your first cricket coach? Well dad sort of when I was really young um, he was sort of the coach that managed to I think help the group, help my teammates and maybe because he was sort of the one that knew cricket and it was certainly great to have him involved when I was young but sort of when I started making a few rep teams and sort of started getting a little bit older he tended to take a back, back foot step and sort of other coaches took over but you know it's always been great having him in the background. Who's been your biggest cricketing influence? I've been lucky enough to have I guess a lot of good coaches along the way. I think someone like Bob Carter, who was my first Canterbury coach, managed to spend a lot of time with him um, from a batting point of view. And once he sort of moved up to the Black Caps, then someone like Craig McMillan has been a massive impact on me in terms of guys that or coaches that both know sort of my game almost just as well as I do. So when you aren't with those guys sort of throughout a tour or throughout a season, they tend to sort of notice things that you might not notice when you've been playing so much. So it's nice to have have different coaches in the background that you know you can call upon and have a hit with or or just talk batting so yeah I certainly appreciate those two guys. Have you got a cricketing hero that you always wanted to be like or someone that you looked up to? Probably Michael Hussey was probably the one that I enjoyed or someone that I that I idolised. Mr Cricket certainly enjoyed the way he went about his cricket, how passionate he was. Also a fellow left-hander that batted a little bit at the top and, and also in the middle so someone like him had an amazing career for Australia and I certainly just enjoyed the way he went about his cricket and how successful he was was uh, was pretty cool. And now the offside. Don't move. Stand there. Timing. Lovely from Latham. So looking back on your career so far, because you've got many years to come, and I'll talk about that in a second, what's sort of been a highlight of your career so far? It would certainly be the World Test Championship final. I guess to win a, the inaugural Test Championship was an amazing feeling. Over a two-year period to, to play the, the cricket that we did, you know, it wasn't just a one-off sort of tournament over a six-week block. It was over a two-year period and in different conditions around the world. One, to make the final was a, an amazing achievement, but yeah, also to win it was was pretty special and, and probably on the back of what happened in 2015 at the World Cup and then also 2019. To come so, so close to winning a world event was was pretty disappointing to not quite get there, but to, to finally get there in the Test Championship final was, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Would 2015 and 2019 be sort of the lowest point that you're looking back on in your career or have you had other moments where it's sort of been a few challenging times? Uh, I wouldn't say low points. I guess what we did at the 2019 World Cup was pretty special in its own right. I think the way the group managed to go about their business from a cricket point of view, there was so much talk about teams scoring 400 and there's going to be massive scores and you know I don't think we scored 300 once. We just went about our business and and took each game at a time and, and managed to get to the semi-final against India over two days, which was certainly different. And then obviously the final at Lords and to come so close, we all know what happened there. But yeah, I think that was a pretty amazing time in New Zealand cricket, even though we didn't quite get across the line. 
coming back from England after the World Test Championship and sharing that moment with New Zealand, how was that experience for you? It was certainly a different feeling. Obviously, the emotions of winning it and then heading into quarantine for two weeks was slightly different, but I guess once we got out of quarantine to, or sort of why we're in quarantine, and then once we got out, to see how much support we had and how much the, the public got in behind us was pretty overwhelming, to be fair. You know, we had the Mace Tour throughout New Zealand and the amount of support that we had throughout those sort of weeks that we, that we did the tour was, uh, you know, it was pretty special and we're certainly very thankful for all the support that we get. How was the Mace Tour? You went around Christchurch with the Mace to share it with the fans? Yes, I was lucky enough to, to do it here in Christchurch and we had quite a big day. We were sort of at the pier, sort of sunrise and then up the Rapaki track and, and all that sort of thing with the, getting some pretty cool shots. And then we're in the town hall for meeting the fans and, and showing them the Mace. And as I said, the amount of support that we had throughout that day was, yeah, it was amazing. I think we just pretty much signed and took photos for about two and a half hours. So the sort of support that we got it was pretty overwhelming to, to see the amount of people that turned up that day, uh, especially considering it was probably a month since we played the final. So really enjoy the support and hopefully we can see them this year as well. What does it mean to this group being called the World Test Champions, being world champions at Test Match Cricket? Yeah, that's an amazing feeling. I think it's something that will take a while to sink in, even you know, hearing you say that. It is quite unbelievable and for us to, to go out and, and achieve something so special in the first ever Test Championship it was pretty cool. And I think even the final was something that was so different. It was played over six days and the amount of rain we got and just the way the game unfolded, for Kane and Ross to be there at the end. The stars certainly aligned on that match, which was pretty cool. So yeah, it's certainly something in time that I'm sure we'll look back on and, and say it was a pretty special moment. And I think I guess it's something that we'll share together as a group. You know, we'll be the first ever World Test Championship finalists and, and winners, so yeah, it's pretty cool. What are sort of the things you've learned about life, I guess, from playing cricket? Oh, yes. I've been lucky enough to yeah, to be around the group for a long period of time and to, I guess to see guys sort of at the back end of their career. I think you sort of realise that there's just, there is life after cricket and, you know, it's you, you're a long time retired and it's important that you have something to, to fall back on outside of the game. I'm lucky enough to, to have a little family now and I guess it sort of puts life into into perspective and I guess going home, whether you've had a good day or whether you had a bad day, you know, seeing the smile on your family's face is pretty cool. So, yeah, I guess it just puts cricket into perspective. It's, it's just a game and, you know, once you're, you're off the cricket field, you're a father, you're a husband and uh, you turn into that role pretty quickly. Well, you're an opening bat as well, so does that mean that you're in the long game at night having to get up and change nappies and do all that duty, or you're uh, sleeping through the night to get your sleep? A little bit of both. Depends what I've got on, but yeah, my wife's certainly doing a, an amazing job getting up throughout the early hours in the morning. I've done that a few times, but certainly sharing the role, that's for sure. What are your ambitions for the future? To keep being a, a member of this team, I think, and to keep winning games of cricket for, for New Zealand and trying to play my role as best I can. Certainly a great group to, to be a part of. We, we enjoy each other's company. We're all good friends and we have a lot of good times together. So just want to keep enjoying my cricket and keep trying to put performances on the board to win games of cricket for New Zealand. Enjoy a shot like that from Tom Latham. What cricketing legacy do you want to leave? Oh, I guess I just want to leave, from a personal point of view, the, the position in a better place, really. From when I started, it was a slightly different environment, and I guess the way that we go about things now from a team-first mentality is pretty cool, and I guess if we're able to leave that legacy along the way, that'll be something that I guess the whole group would, would be very proud of, and I'm sure if you see things that we're doing uh, at the moment that you see teams doing that in the future, then I guess that's a, a pretty good sign that you've left a good legacy, so I guess time will tell.